So it's a nice rainy wet day here in Fiordland and to be honest this is pretty much my favourite conditions to shoot in whether it's being in the forest or heading out and trying to capture the waterfalls and the mountain scenery uh, I just find that there's always something that speaks to me and there's so many opportunities to capture so we'll, we'll go out now and I'll show you around and, and we'll see if something jumps out I don't know if we're going to capture an image or not or at least an image that I'll ever publish or hold on to but for me it's just fun anyway um, and that's one of the reasons why I go out a lot of the time I don't have I don't have to make images I don't have a quota of certain images to make I'm not shooting for any companies my photography's always been for me um, but I'm coming out because I just love it <laughs> I'm compelled to being out outside and just finding those moments that completely floor you and humble you um, so we might end up in the forest I want to see what happens with the mountains as well the rains backed off which could be good could be bad one of the biggest things about living and photographing remote areas is just always being prepared for the worst case scenarios always being warm enough in my car I have shelter and food to get me through for days I've been caught in storms here and had to be helicopter evacuated out I've had times where I've encountered people that have crashed their vehicle um, you just got to always prepare for that worst case pushing through the forest it's a huge waterfall a couple hundred meters from here which I spotted so I'm trying to push through love to get the forest framing this waterfall it's a temporary waterfall and what I mean by that is it only exists uh, on the rainy days so it's not always here you can probably just hopefully get a glimpse of it up here but yeah I'd love a, some ferns framing that up or something I have no idea how to get over there and just trying now should have put a Gore-Tex pants on <laughs> I talk about being prepared but uh you always forget something we just get too excited and just want to get out there which is uh typically the case for me it's a bit of a stream up here it could be nice in its own right there's a glimpse of the waterfall let's have a look at this stream There it is. Probably isn't going to work. Maybe. I'll get the lens out and have a look. I'll often, sometimes I like to just see it through the perspective of the lens. But primarily I've got to see the right subject matter first. So obviously the waterfall, but then the fern tree on the right and then this one on the left, which is curving in. So that's my framing, beautiful fallen tree here with all these greens crown ferns in the front there's even a stream there it's a tight fit though and then getting that waterfall in I'll see I'll get the lens out and we'll have a look we'll start off with the 16 to 35 because I want to capture what's right in front of me here so I need to be wide just go nice and wide 16 not bad. Gets that uh, creek in quite nicely. Definitely a vertical orientation. Yeah, it's a tricky one. There's a lot going on. Maybe a bit too cluttered. I'll see. Sometimes I do some yard work and just do a general tidy up of the area. And, you know, you get a lot of fallen... bit of wood fall and just bits and pieces clean it up now I think the key with this frame might be not to get the sky in which is just really drawing the attention up out of the frame too much even just getting the lower portion of the waterfall it still makes for a nice subject let's have a look oh, this is kind of the fun part for me just finding the frame and if I can make it work I like the challenge with the weather and the fast changing environment. Sometimes it's just, it can break your heart how close it can be to an amazing frame and, and then something doesn't align, particularly with light and atmosphere, which man, it can, you know, it makes or breaks an image and it changes so quick. I've tried this type of thing before 
maybe not with this waterfall, but utilizing the falls I come off the mountains and then trying to frame it up with the forest and it is way easier said than done. Having this stream here as well, and then that fallen tree, there's just multiple elements, which I think make this one probably work. So for my handheld workflow, you know, trying to get a tripod in here would just make me cry. <laughs> it's, to get this height and adjust as fast as I can to handheld, I'm sitting on about one eighth of a second. I, can pr I could probably do one sixth of a second pretty easy. The ferns aren't really moving, so that's a huge blessing. Sometimes if you have a breeze, it, you know, even on a tripod, that's a nightmare. So one eighth of a second, I've got F11 for that depth of field. All is well there. I can focus stack if I needed to. ISO is sitting on about 400. For me, 640 on this camera is about my threshold. 640 is actually really good, particularly on these green scenes where the noise just blends in anyway. Uh, and then I won't go above that. 90% of my shots are gonna be ISO 200 or lower anyway. After I've taken an image, I'm always checking that it's sharp. That's the main thing. They'll often be slightly underexposed because I shoot for the highlights and I'll recover the shadows in post. It's just easier, especially if you have a big dynamic range. And being handheld, I can't always get the image bright anyway. So just I'll zoom in and often check. And that's sharp all the way, right in the front and then right through to the back. So there's no problem with settings or anything like that. It's just now making this the best possible frame and, and doing justice to everything that's here. But this is this is awesome, really enjoying this. And the, the rain has just stopped, which it does make life a bit easier. I find for me personally, the longer I sit at a spot and try and tweak everything, when I get home, the best result is probably the first few frames I shot. It's almost like I'm just in a more natural flow state, not over, overthinking things. And I think my handheld approach just helps with that as well. It just keeps me moving and, and in the zone. And I just don't like to sit here and shoot the same thing over and over. Once I think I've got the shot, then I redo it again. It's just a bit of a safety. And then I double check, was there anything I could have done better? And then that's it. And then I can just sit back and enjoy what's happening. That waterfall is dropping off so much because the rain stopped, that fall will disappear in probably the next hour or so. All right, well, it was uh, quite pleasant. You know, sometimes I can go a month without creating an image. And then other, other weeks you might get five in a week. And often it's, it's not so much the landscape or the conditions, it's just your mindset, the way that, how you feel on that given day and how you're viewing the, the scenery. Yeah, I'm a little bit shocked actually, because I thought about making this video and we more or less just started recording and we walked into this scene, which as I said, I, I have had an attempt at this type of thing before here. It's easier said than done, but today I just, walked right into that right foreground and midground that all just flowed and framed everything up. And challenge now is uh, finding where the car is. <laughs> as long as I've got the waterfall to my back, I'm making, I'll be heading in the right direction. It's gotta be my uh, favorite environment to just to be amongst ever since I was a child. So it's always a happy time in the forest with or without the camera, whether or not you find an image. To me, it's just that place of solitude. Okay, it's been a few weeks since I photographed that scene. I processed the image in probably less than 15 minutes. It's basically just a bit of dodging and burning, to be fair. And I've had time just to, to kind of sit on it and go, yeah, does this shot work for me or not? Because at the end of the day, all my images that I make, I'm only trying to really please one person in particular, and that's myself. I'm not trying to shoot for the masses or a certain demographic or anything like that. It's just 
does this image represent something to me personally? Um, how I felt, what I witnessed, what I experienced out in the field. And in fact, it does. Uh, as I said before in the field, this type of scenery for me, I've just found it really hard to photograph, you know, where I live here, to see these waterfalls towering off the mountains, but then to get in the lush forest and find a way to get the two together. It's just incredibly difficult. And in the past, I'd tried, but could never find the opening. Or if I found an opening through the forest, there was just no framing or anything like that. So for this scene, it borders on being too busy, but I feel like for me, it just works. And I really like the multiple layers of detail, the foreground that leads into the creek and that fallen tree. And then of course the ferns, which frame up the waterfall in the background. The hardest part was just fitting that all into the frame and making it flow cohesively. One of the biggest issues was the waterfall in the back, having that uh, get some separation from the ferns. So if I went too far left and right, the ferns would start to hit the waterfall and you can see that happening, happening partially, but that was the best I can do. If I went too far the other direction, then those leaves which are coming down from the top of frame, they would hit the waterfall. So it was just a bit of a balancing act. But uh, yeah, I really like the end result here and I feel like something like this would look quite nicely big on a wall and I'd feel like I'm pretty much standing right there. The exposure itself, just a single one, I think it was one six of a second and that was simply it. So nice and easy. And that's how a lot of the images are made sometimes, just simply going out and just spending that time in the field, poking around and it's just a simple handheld shot like that in the best case scenario. Um, obviously, obviously it's not always that easy and you don't always get the conditions you want but this one really was a long time coming and it was just a pleasure to share that with you. So yeah, thank you for watching. Leave a comment below if you want me to cover a different type of scenery and I'll try and film the next time I head out and, and make something new. Cheers.